10 years later, they have this understanding. And, and 10 years later, they go to college and someone says, well, did God really say? And they may still have the understanding, but they right. don't remember any of the underlying stuff. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am in the studio today and back with my friend, Nathan <laughs> King, who Garrett likes to refer to as Nat King Cole. It's true. It's true. He came up with that all by himself. I know. He's so smart. That's why I keep him around. And because he's really good at producing this podcast. He is indeed. He's a gifted man. Yeah. Well, and I love him. And he's the father of my children. There's there's several. So many things. A lot of elements. A lot of elements. But I know you guys are good buddies and um, your family is amazing. We love your family. Oh, thank you. We we enjoy you as well. Yeah, thanks. You guys live near us. Yep. You work for IEW. I do. And you have a lot of other exciting things going on, like Bible Quest. That's true. Yeah. Which we've already done a podcast on. We will put links to that in the show notes so that you guys can hear all about Bible Quest. Um, But this week, we are going to talk about the power of memorization. And we are super excited about that. But before we get into that, we want to say thank you to our sponsor, CTC Math. If you guys are looking for a great online math program, go to ctcmath.com. Try them out for free. ctcmath.com. So Nat King Cole, (laughs) Nathan King, um, introduce yourself to us again. So for maybe those who, I think it's been about a year probably since you were on with your beautiful wife, Melissa, Yeah. um, talking about Bible Quest. And we talked a little bit about memorization in that one, but not too much. So we're going to go deep this week into memorization, but introduce us to your family. Okay. So um, my name is Nathan King and um, I was a youth pastor for 13 years up in Kansas um, and, uh, at the end of that time, uh, God called us down to work at IEW. Um, but while we were up there, there was this opportunity that we had to start homeschooling. We started this homeschooling journey with my daughter, Lydia, when she was about four. And, um, we got introduced, uh, to kind of some amazing concepts at that time that I had never really, really considered before. I, I, I actually was a secondary education major back in college. Okay. And so, um, and, and Bible, I, I, I did a dual degree, nice. so. Um, but anyway, so, but I'd never been exposed to, um, some of the concepts that we're going to talk about tonight and, Mm -hmm. and memorization really wasn't a, a major component of that. I mean, that sounds kind of odd in some ways. It's like, you got to memorize some stuff, right? But, but honestly, in what we studied, um, I went to Kansas state university, um, but in what we studied, I I didn't really have much in the way of memorization. That Mm -hmm. really wasn't a, an emphasis of what they were talking about. They had some other things they emphasized, but not that. Yeah. And so um, anyway, we, we um, built this program called Bible Quest because we kind of saw a need for, um, for biblical literacy and, and ways like tools to teach biblical, biblical literacy. Yeah. And, and part of that is, of course, that, that memorization component. Um, and, and, you know, like, well, don't you just memorize the Bible? Well, yes, you can memorize the Bible and, and you don't need Bible Quest. You don't, you don't need it. Um, you know, God's word so is So you do sufficient. need the Bible. You do need the Bible <laughs> though. That's right. Um, what we do is we create tools that are helpful in, in, in learning the Bible. And so, um, anyway, that's kind of where we, where we came from. We, we, we've been working at IEW now for, um, Oh man, about six years, I think it's about how long, and it's been uh, a fun thing. I, I get to work with Andrew Pudua and yeah. I get to, AP. Uh, yeah, AP, and uh, I get to work on a lot of really, um, I, I find very fascinating projects. So yeah. I have four kids. We have a fifth one. I, I actually, we have five kids. Yeah. One is just not outside Amen. yet. Amen. That's right. <laughs> um, so uh, we have, we go all the way down from 15 all the way down to, of course, still in the womb. So. Yeah. Yeah. So exciting. Do you know yet if it's a boy or a girl? So we, if you do, you probably can't say on the podcast. No, I, I actually don't know oh. because we, today we actually had a, 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 um, a appointment um, with the midwife or we're going to go that route. And, um, she, uh, she has, man, they have such cool technology. I mean, they, they, you can do like the, the sonogram and everything like, you know, with the, with the smartphone and, and this little, really? uh, this, this little attachment thing, wow. I, it's, it's amazing. Like we used to have to pay so much money to do that anyway, but, um, now, yeah, they can just kind of do that stuff, but it isn't the same quality as like the professional grade right. sonogram. So we, we didn't get quite that level of detail. Oh, man. Um, we're, we're thinking girl. Oh yeah. But well, you've got four girls already. Or I've got four, three, three girls, already. three girls and one, one boy. boy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so he, he's, he, he has to hold his own. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's good at it. He's oh, yeah. such a sweet kid. So that is so exciting. We are super excited for your family. You, you know, children are an absolute blessing from the Lord. And uh, so, so it's fun. It's so funny. 
this has absolutely nothing to do with what we're talking about today. But this morning, Brooklyn and I were joking about, you know, all the people who do the like one and done, two and through. I had said three and G, you know, <laughs> so we just get, we went all Four the way to some t- more, <laughs> you know, yeah. we went all the way to 10. It was kind of funny. Anyway, I won't list them all for you because I, like I can't it. remember, but it was, it was pretty funny. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so yes, we are going to dig into the topic of memorization. And it's yeah. so interesting when I think about memorization, because when I think about it in my world of schooling and academics as a kid, this is what it looked like for me. I would memorize, quote unquote, something for a test. Mm -hmm. I would take the test. I would remember some of what I had so-called memorized. And after that test was over, it was gone out of my brain, which is why I remember virtually nothing from school. Right. And I would say that I'm probably not alone in that. You're not. Most of us. Yeah. That's, that was our world of memorization, but I was never actually taught to memorize much of anything. The only thing I ever remember memorizing as a child is I had a a teacher, um, Heather Horning was her name. She was one of my favorite people in the whole world, still is. She's an amazing woman. And she taught us to memorize in sixth grade. I went to a Christian school and we memorized John 1, 1 through 13. In Mm. the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And I, I still can say most of it and that was many years ago, but I don't ever remember memorizing anything other than that piece of scripture. So when Garrett and I had kids, he, Garrett said, our, I want our girls to memorize scripture. And I was like, okay. I mean, are they capable of that? They're like little teeny tiny. Right, They're like, right, I mean, right. well, like we started this when Brooklyn was like two. Okay. And sure enough, I mean, she, we just would read it the same thing over and over and she would memorize it. And so I started to understand. Wait, wait, you didn't have any special tools? No special you tools. You just like ran just with ran, it? You know, yeah. I, I, you don't even need Bible Quest. Right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but we again, we do need the Bible. We so do. it was really cool just to see how kids have the ability to mem- memorize all sorts of things, which obviously they memorize right. songs, they memorize books as we read them. But I want to talk about like first kind of the why, you know, as we think about homeschooling, we always have to know our why and our purpose behind anything we do. Like, why do we do the things we do? So when we think about memorization, let's first talk about the why of memorization. Why should we, and do we memorize anything? Right. Yeah, for sure. And I think you bring up a great point. It's like my, and that was kind of how my education was as well, is that you kind of have this vague familiarity with things, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't, you didn't ever center in and just, and just really, you know, master this bit of this body of knowledge, unless it was necessary for a later bit of knowledge, like math, uh, we, right. we practiced over and over, you know, right. but that was a right. skill. Math I mean, that, facts, but right. math facts, we, we did, we did memorize those. I actually do yeah. remember, remember doing that. I don't know if they still do that in school now. Yeah. Um, you know, the calculator question right. and all that kind of stuff. But, but, um, but yeah, I mean, so there was a few things we did and I think our culture does memorize mm-hmm. when it matters, right? Like there's a few things they still memorize. Kids still learn the ABC song. Right. They may not learn it in school. I don't, I don't know, but yeah. their parents teach it to them. You know, right. people, you right. teach it because you have to, right? I mean, yeah. that you, you have you to memorize ABCs. it. Yeah. You got to learn your ABCs. Um, and so, um, but, but the question you asked was, you know, kind of why do we memorize? And, and one thing that um, actually Andrew Pudwa brought up, um, you know, in, in his talk, he has a talk on, um, I, I'm a speaker, his speaker coordinator. So I, I get to interact with a lot of his, his content. Um, he talks about the goodness of memory mm-hmm. and um, that, that whole talk, you know, one of the things that he brings up in there is, you know, if you didn't memorize anything, mm-hmm. you would know nothing, mm-hmm. right? Wow. Like, like every word I'm saying right now, every yeah. word you've said. Right. You've memorized. Yeah. I, I, I've I, never thought of that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just, it's just the idea that, that I had to memorize those mm-hmm. words. I can't just use them right. wholesale. And so in that sense, memory, memorization mm-hmm. actually gives us a context for any communication. Mm. And if you take that a little bit farther, you say, okay, wait, so that gives me context for communication. It, it can give you context for communication in certain zones, right? So if we're going to talk about ancient Rome, you're going to have to learn some stuff like right. the word Caesar. You're gonna have to learn, you know, you know, I mean, you have to understand who Julius is and, and who Augustus is and all it's these not guys, just you know. a salad. <laughs> no, <laughs> although <laughs> that's tasty, but you know, yeah. So you, you have, you have to learn the, the, these words so yeah. you can even have a context for the conversation. Right. So any memorization provides a context and a foundation and a, a milieu in which mm-hmm. we can have a great conversation mm-hmm. about, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. What we do at IEW is break through the the noise of the grammar and the writing prompts and we say, this is what you do, step by step. And I've witnessed it over and over again, both watching Andrew teach and hearing from parents, this is the best writing program. 
We've made it so easy and made it really affordable. So any mom can teach writing to their children using our course, and we guarantee it. To try three weeks of free lessons, visit IEW.com. We are back with Nathan. Um, so let's keep talking about the why. Like, why do we memorize stuff? Absolutely. And so we talked about the conversation, right? We have that in right. the context of the conversation. Um, one thing that that's, that's I, I find very, very interesting is that, now in my context, of course, of Bible Quest, I'm going to be talking a lot about scripture, right? And I'm going to be mm-hmm. talking about, you know, learning things about the Bible. Um, and so in that vein, you, you know, if, if I teach somebody something about, you know, God is good or, you know, sin is bad or, you know, just any, any concept you want to, you want to teach and I get them to understand it, mm-hmm. right? I get them to understand it, but I don't give them any of the underlying, say scripture. I, I give that we don't take time memorizing anything that backs that up. They just understand it. They can understand it, right? right? They'll get it. Uh, maybe they're junior high or something or whatever, but then let's imagine for a moment, 10 years later, right? 10 years later, they have this understanding and, and 10 years later they go to college and someone says, well, did God really say, and they may still have the understanding, but they right. don't remember any of the underlying stuff. Right. You know what I mean? Like, sure, like yeah. if, if you're talking about like a scientific concept right. and, and someone helps you to understand it, but you don't understand like the basis for right. it. You don't understand the foundation of that. 10 years later, you're going to say, well, no, I think that's the way it is, but, but, but I don't really know. Right. right. And, and so of course with God's word, that's a big deal. Yeah. Right. Because you start saying, Does, did God really say right. my understanding gets wobbly? Yeah. yeah. Right. And so in that sense, memorization not only provides even the means that we can have a conversation, Mm -hmm. it also provides the reinforcement for the understanding that I need. Like we all love the understanding, right? We all love kids have understanding. Yeah. But if if it's not shored up by anything underneath it, if it doesn't have a a foundation of memorized repertoire, uh, how how can you back it up? Yeah. Right? In a conversation, someone else can say, well, I can back it up with this fact and this fact, what I think about that. I don't think that's true. How are you going to fight that? Right. Right. And that, that can leave you in a place where you're kind of like, well, is it really? You yeah. Know? And that's, that's frustrating. I don't know, that doesn't necessarily shipwreck faith on its own. Sure. But I certainly think there's an impact there. Right. I've never thought about it in the context of the foundation for what we understand. Mm. But that's really true. I mean, yeah. we, we have to have that foundation. And that, I mean, that can go all the way into apologetics and stuff. And, and you know, knowing what we believe, Absolutely. understanding what we believe, but we have to understand what that foundation is in order to be able to defend what did God really say? Absolutely. I mean, you look at the church today and so many churches are just so off biblically because you've got people preaching from the pulpit right. who have no idea what God's word really does say. <laughs> no. And that's, that's a right. very dangerous place to be. It's a scary place for us to be as a nation because then the people who go into those churches and have no idea what God's word says, listen to those people and go, oh, well, they must actually know what they're saying. And so as homeschoolers, we have a great responsibility. And I shouldn't even say as homeschoolers, as Christian parents. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Who are discipling the hearts of our kids. We have a great responsibility to help our kids understand the truth of God's word. Mm. Not just believe what I say because I say that it's right. true. Right, right, right. But because here is where and how it's based in scripture. Yeah. Right. God actually gave that to us. He brought that to us. Yeah. Here's where yeah. it is. Yeah. And, and there's, there's, and we can talk a little bit later about maybe like how to memorize and there's different tools to right. do that. Yeah, it, for sure. There's different ways of getting there, Yeah. but you've got to have the underlying kind of foundation. And that really goes actually for anything. It's not just scriptural. Yeah. Right. I mean, like, I mean, you need that for science. You need that for, you know, yeah. mathematics. You need that for any of that kind of stuff. Otherwise you just have some sort of vague notion, right? right. That something is a certain way. Right. And you can't back it. Right. Right. Yeah. So let me ask you another question. What sure. about people who have a hard time with memorization? Cause I'm one of those people. I mean, I, I, and, and I don't know, maybe you've done the research on this. Obviously kids are like sponges and it's mm. why, you know, there's that foundation phase of the, their childhood right. and where they can memorize stuff without understanding it because at four and five years old, they don't need to understand everything that they memorize, but they can absorb it. They right. can just soak that into their brains. It's, it's remarkable to me, but as an adult, like I've never trained my brain, you know, as Lee Borton says, train the brain to retain. Absolutely. I've never trained my brain to retain. And I have a really, really hard time with memorization still. And so Mm. it's always shocking to me when we've memorized scripture as a family and my girls, you know, four and five years old, they they could, I mean, they can say entire chapters of Psalms and mm-hmm, Proverbs mm-hmm. and various parts of scripture. And I'm like, I got like the first three verses, you know, and, right. and they, they can rattle off the whole thing. And it's just amazing. So 
talk to the person and, and not just the adult, but the person who um, maybe adult or child who has a hard time with memorization. Absolutely. So kind of in general, um, memorization is easier for younger kids. Mm-hmm. It's, it is true. Like, like, and it's in general, obviously there's going to be exceptions to the rule. Why, why do you think that is? I think it's what God designed us. But, but if you, if you think about like a child has to absorb mm-hmm. a huge amount of specifically language, right? right? I mean, like, you know, uh, you talk about a, a kid that, you know, what is it, 18 months or something? Mm-hmm. Maybe they start saying mama. Yeah. It's been a while since I've had little kids. So if yeah. I got the age wrong, you're I'm about sorry. to do this I'm again. About to have it again. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, but, but they, you know, they say mom, you know, and then they say mama, 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 you know, they're, they're saying it over and over again. And, yeah. and you're like, are they ever going to get another one? And, and then suddenly they start saying another word, mm-hmm. right? And uh, Andrew Pudua talks about this. It, this is one of the things that he talked about too. And, and apparently for him, the second word for his, his uh, oldest was, uh, Coco, the dog down the street. Oh. It wasn't dad, you know, he, he had to deal with that. But anyway, but, but, but then they get another word and then they get another one and then it starts coming faster and faster and faster. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and, but they have to absorb that. And every human being has that to some capacity. Mm-hmm. Clearly there are people who are brain injured and have, you know, there's, there's issues where sure. that can happen, but, but the vast majority, that's exactly what happens. And so I think that's part, probably why God gave that ability to these kids. They have an extremely elastic brain. Mm -hmm. Um, They also have, uh, I guess, like something like 85% of all the neural connections you will ever have are by the time you're, are are formed by the time you're age like six or seven. Wow. And so, I mean, I mean, and we still do grow, like our brains still do develop. They still, they still do have, I think something like 300 neurons a day uh, that you're actually producing. Yeah. Which, which is really incredible. Of course, that's like a super, super tiny amount of, you know, but, but it is, if it's true, you actually have these neurons, you know, being built in your brain all the time. Yeah. And um, it's just, you have so many of them when you're little, um, there's a lot to learn. It's a right. big world. It's a big, wonderful world that God made and you've got to be able to absorb it. But you, you came out, you know, you came out as a little baby and you got to, got to grow that brain and that head. And right. I think that's the reason why they have such a capacity yeah. to take in information that way. And that's, that, that's one really interesting point is that, you know, little kids don't mind memorization. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like adults, like, I mean, we can get annoyed or, you know, right. whatever with like seeing the same veggie tales over and over again, right. or, you know, whatever. <laughs> they don't, I mean, there, there's like, there's a comfort there, right. right. To seeing the same thing over and over again. It's like, I know what's going to happen. There was some research actually done, uh, Sesame street. Sesame street is actually research-based the original oh. stuff. I know yeah, that like, I believe that I, yeah. I, I don't even know some <laughs> don't stuff watch today. it now, <laughs> I don't even, yeah. but, 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 but the original stuff that they yeah. were actually doing a research based. And, and one of the things that they did was, um, they, they would, they would show, a certain sequence, like, uh, you know, oh, I don't remember who it was. It was some, one of the, one of the Muppets anyway. It was a certain sequence of them doing a, a very specific, you know, script. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they'd show that sequence on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. And then they wouldn't show it on Thursday. Hmm. And then they would show it on Friday. And the kids would get up and cheer when they saw that. Okay. Oh, you know, wow. get, because yeah. they're like, oh yeah, you know, Wait, remember this? so-and-so is doing, you know, whatever. Yeah. And, and so, so they, they, they love that repetition and it was, it was even a, even cause for celebration for them. Yeah. Um, and so I know that doesn't answer the, the general question that you, you asked, but, but I, I, there is a kind of a reassurance that, um, God did design kids to, right. to take that in. Now, what do we do about that when we're older? Right. right? What do we do about that? Um, the good news is that there's actually tools that you can use. Okay. You can train your brain. It is actually a teachable, learnable skill. You mentioned Lee Borton's mm-hmm. uh, and, and she called it trainable, right? And so um, there, there's other people who have you've talked a lot about this. Mm-hmm. Um, if you really want to go deep, we, and we'll, we'll talk some more about tools maybe in a little bit. Yeah. Um, but if you really want to go deep, there's a book called Moonwalking with Einstein. If you want to go okay. deep into, you know, what, what, what it means to have uh, a well-trained mind mm-hmm. that can memorize things very quickly. Um, this is about um, people. This is about, it's like there's a competition, like a memory competition. It's like a modern okay. thing, right? And um, this guy went and he joined this competition, and and he was able to memorize um, two decks of cards that were shuffled together in 90 seconds. Wow! I, like memorize it. Okay, and there's a way to do that. There's 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 there actually tools you can yeah. use, and those are not, and some of those are not readily apparent. So mm-hmm. I guess that's kind of the good news is that you may be, may be like, oh, man, just rote right. memorization is not working for me. Good news is there's actually other things right. you can do. So, um, but it is tra- uh, teachable. It is trainable. It's like when you, people learn an extra language, you know, they mm-hmm. learn their second language. The right. third one is easier. Oh, right. Oh, because yeah. the brain has been trained right. to make certain connections. Right. And, and when you make those connections, the more you connect those neurons, because every time that you, you use a neuron, right? A neuron has like an axon that, that goes over and, and it has like this, uh, this, it crosses this synapse with these dendrites, right? And now actually, we're doing a science lesson. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> but, no, but it sends the signal along <laughs> yeah. that axon and it crosses that little synapse. Anyway, every time it does it, every time it does that, it strengthens that connection, right? Mm-hmm. And if you do that enough, that connection actually becomes like permanent or semi-permanent. 
right? And so that, that's what that's what's happening is you're going over that. You're making those connections, you know, yeah. more and more permanent. The more connections you get in your brain, mm -hmm. the higher your capacity to learn actually becomes. It actually wow. it actually increases. It, we we know this more like we know this more now. And I'm not a, like a brain scientist, but I'm just yeah. saying this is stuff like like you know, like research in the last I don't yeah. know, a few decades. Um, but that the brain is actually capable of increasing its capacity right. for, for doing things like memory yeah. um, and, the, and and healing. And there's a lot that goes into that. But anyway, that's kind of the reassurance it's, and the, sure. the encouragement there. So it's basically exercise. It's, yeah, it's, you're exercising your brain for sure. and stretching your brain mm -hmm. to be able to memorize. And sometimes memorize. you're done and you're just tired. Because well, you tired it out. It's, yeah. it's, 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 you can tire it out because it, it is at its work. Yeah. But. Yeah. We talked about this, I think with, with Tyler Hogan. Um, and I think we talked about this part of it. And I was, I was saying it's interesting because when you think about getting a new job, I know, you know, in the past I've gotten new jobs before and you go into a brand new job and maybe, you know, you're sitting at a desk. I mean, this was my experience. You know, I, I was, I did administrative work years ago. And I remember specifically one job I went and I sat at a desk all day long and I didn't, I wasn't doing any physical labor. I was just learning a new job. And right. like after, like every day for the first couple of days, I would just go home and I was like, I am so exhausted. I just mentally, I, right. Yeah. I, but like my whole body felt drained right. as if I had been, you know, doing construction all day, you know, I, I mean, it was insane. And it was, I think it's that type of thing where I was exercising my brain beyond what it's typically, <laughs> yeah. you know, being used for. So for sure. anyway, we are out of time, but really okay, quickly sure. tell us, you mentioned Bible Quest and of yeah. course we, we've we done a whole episode on that, but tell us for those who have missed that episode. And again, we'll put links to that in the show notes uh, very quickly. What is Bible Quest? And, and we've got commercials for it. I know yeah, you've do, sponsored yeah. the podcast, yeah. which is so exciting, but give us just a, a brief overview of Bible Quest. Okay. So basically um, there is a method of, under of, of learning called mm -hmm. the classical model. Lots mm -hmm. of people, when they say classical education, it can mean a whole lot of different things. I'm talking yeah. about just kind of the plan. Okay. okay. Um, and that basically is memorize stuff, which yeah. I'm a big fan of, um, and then uh, read and talk about stuff. Uh -huh. And then uh, apply and share that mm -hmm. stuff, right? That, that's kind of, if, if you were to break it down, right. there's three kind of phases, memorization, kind of that understanding phase where you're talking about it. And then, you know, kind of the application or really it's building of wisdom. And so Bible Quest provides tools for all of that. And the good news is um, that your children, as they grow, kind of move into each of those phases, right? You have the little kids or memorization yeah. that, you know, the preteens and, and kind of middle school or more in that, what we call the dialectic phase, mm -hmm. um, which is the middle phase. And then your, your high schoolers are really kind of in that, what we call the rhetoric phase mm -hmm. um, or that, that um, application and sharing kind of phase. And um, so Bible Quest provides tools for that um, to, to help make that, uh, to maximize right. that as you're, as, you're, as you're teaching your kids. So to make it as easy as possible. Right. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, it's all about God's word. So if, even if you don't want to buy a Bible Quest, memorize stuff about God's word. Memorize yeah. God's word, right? Yeah. Read about it and talk about it. Yeah. And then apply it and do it and mentor your kids through that whole process. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that's, that's you're going to teach the Bible that you're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Very cool. And where can people find it? Oh, go to biblequestclassical.com. And if you want to, if you want to try it out for free, you can go to biblequestclassical.com forward slash. Um, let's, let's give them the rocked. Sure. Cause we actually have, um, we are actually on, on their podcast. And so um, R O C K E D. If you want to go to rocked, you can get four weeks. So biblequestclassical.com slash rocked. Yep. Okay. Exactly. There you have it. Thank you for being with me today. We will be back on Wednesday. We will be talking more about memorization this week and just how we can use it. There's so much power in memorization. And this is a great way for us to help our kids and instill God's word in their hearts. Because once it's in their minds, it's in their hearts. So thank you for listening. If you guys haven't watched the movie yet, Nathan has watched the movie. I have. A lot of times, Several actually. Several times, yeah. <laughs> this is a really cool kind of Nathan trivia thing. We've done a few showings here locally in Tulsa, and both times you've been the uh, moderator yeah, yeah, for, yeah. for our, our Q&A sessions afterwards, and, and he's a natural at it. It's really oh, been a lot of fun. Nice. And you also helped in the beginning when we were making the movie, um, after we were done with the final edit, you were one of the 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 big testers who went it, like, through, early. you saw it early yeah. and you went through and you, you picked it apart and yep. said, you know, this is, this doesn't make sense. This is wrong. You know, this is not a good shot. And it, right, it right. was, um, a, a huge blessing to us. So, well, so I thank know. you for your, your Thanks role. Thanks for letting me do it. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I teased awesome. Garrett that he, there was one little tiny error in there 
yeah. kind of tease him that he must have left that in there just for me <laughs> because I needed something, you know, something that I could say. Something. So. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you guys. If you haven't seen it, go to Schoolhouse Rocked dot com you can stream it you can purchase the dvd share it with your friends and uh, be blessed by it thank you we'll see you back here on wednesday bye education is discipleship and this is something i didn't understand until i was probably three years into homeschooling the bible teaches us in luke 6 40 that when a student is fully trained he will be like his teacher and as we look around the culture right now uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children and what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children.